ירושלים, ויחזקם, ויחזקם, ויהי בן מגדלים, ויהי בן מגדלים. Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of the Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number 9, which we will see is representative of a turning point. The Hebrew word for 9 is Tesha, Genesis 5.5, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Leviticus 23.32 and it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And this is talking about Yom HaKippurim. And here, even though it says ninth in an adjective form, it is used in a noun form in the original Hebrew, Tesha. The ordinal number is pronounced Shi'i, and uh, it just means ninth. First Chronicles 24, 10. The seventh to Hakoz, the eighth to Abiyah, 24, 11. The ninth to Yeshua, and the tenth to Shekinah. So I included this verse because I think it has a little interesting fact. If you remember, the um, father of Yochanan the baptizer, was of the course of Abiyah, and his was the eighth course, and the course that follows him is the course of Yeshua. It's kind of an interesting, uh, maybe coincidence, or maybe not. Ezra 10.9, Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. The ninth month is uh, the month in which uh, Hanukkah takes place. It is the winter time, and this is when it rains in the land. Parent root is a two-letter phoneme which expresses an idea, but is not a word by itself. And in this case, it is not a word by itself, but we're going to see several related words. The parent root for Tesha is Shin Ayin. first word we're going to look at is a verb, sha'ah, which means to look, look around and sometimes to look around for help. Genesis 4.4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of that fat thereof. And now he had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So it's kind of uh, saying how the Lord looked at uh, Abel and he looked around and, and saw his situation and that he respected what he brought for an offering. Second Samuel twenty two forty two. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto Yahweh, but he answered them not. So along with the idea of looking is the idea of turning, turning one's head back and forth. Job fourteen six. Turn from him that he may rest until he shall accomplish as a hireling his day. Isaiah 31, 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh. So they're looking here and there. In this case, they are looking or they're not looking for help. From this idea of turning uh, this way and that way, it comes to an idea of, um, of a moment in time. So the translation, hour, is uh, an Aramaic word, but it is a word that has come into modern Hebrew. And if you want to know what time it is, you say, Mahasha'a, what is the hour? Daniel 5.5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Not so much as in an hour or 60 minutes, but in that moment. Another related three-letter root is Shava, which means to cry out, and also, again, to cry out for help. 
Job 29.12 Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. Psalm 18.6 In my distress I called upon Yahweh, and cried unto my God. He heard my voice at his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. So we see a related word there, which is used as a noun. This word, this root, you know, yesha, which means to just say, save or deliver, which is, of course, the root for Yeshua's name. Psalm 18.3 I will call upon Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Judges 2.16 Nevertheless, Yahweh raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. The Hebrew uh, verbs, the grammar, is, is kind of complex. So even when this word is used as uh, a noun for the person who is doing the act, it appears in a present tense, what we would consider to be a present tense verb form. And it modifies the way the whole word looks, and we pronounce it Moshia. Maybe you've heard that, Moshienu, our Savior. But it is a verb form. It's in the present tense, the one who is doing the action. Isaiah 19.20 And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So if you go looking in your Strongs for the word Moshia, you will not find it, because it is a verb form. Specifically, it's the present participle he feel form of the verb Yasha. Um, there's another video here on the channel about uh, using the mem as a prefix to make a noun. So if you are a little more skilled in Hebrew, you can check that out. The root, Yud Shin Ayin, takes two other forms, which are noun forms, meaning salvation. One is Yeshua, Exodus 14.13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. Isaiah 12, 3, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Another form begins with a tab, Teshua, Judges 15, 18. And he was sore athirst, and he called on Yahweh and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance and through the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. A uh, story about Samson. Some other translations for Tishua. Psalm 60:11, Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Proverbs 11:14, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Another root is shin ayin ayin. And uh, it comes to mean um, to delight in or this idea of a child playing from the idea of stroking or caressing. Uh, there is uh, sometimes it's used where you smearing something across the eyes to blind someone. Again, it's the idea of stroking that is the root of the word. Psalm 119.16 I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. This word is used so many times in Psalm 119 with, uh, in connection to all the words, the, the statutes, the laws, the ordinances. There are nine different words that's used in 119 to talk about the laws of Yahweh. Isaiah 11.8 And the sucking child shall play in, on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the cockatrice's den. This same root 
is used also uh, as a noun. It's always uh, in the plural, sha'ashu'im. And really, the older grammars keep showing it as a three-letter root because they cling to the three-letter roots. But in modern Hebrew, we talk about four-letter roots. And this would be an example of one, shin ayin, shin ayin. Isaiah 5, 7, for the vineyard of Yahweh of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, and but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Jeremiah 31, 19, is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? But since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith Yahweh. So as I was studying this, I began to see something that drew all these meanings together. And that is at the moment of the crucifixion. Matthew twenty-seven forty-five. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. We're talking about the number nine. We have talked about the word hour. About the ninth hour, Yeshua, the salvation, cried out with a loud voice, Shava, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elijah. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Again Yeshua, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. This was the delight of the Father's will that Yeshua be obedient to this point of death. And this is, in fact, the turning point of all of creation, the fact that he took that obedience, the, the perfect life, the sinless life that he lived, he took it to the cross to be the perfect sacrifice, and creation turned. The salvation was provided for. Hebrews 9.26 For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Revelation 13a, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. From the very beginning of time, the Father had a plan, and that plan involved Yeshua going to the tree almost 2,000 years ago. And it is on that point that hinges all the salvation of the world. Those who live before him to look forward to that point, those who live after him to look back to that point. The idea of nine, also the idea is that there's just one more turn to go to 10, which is a perfect number. So all this picture of coming together of the turning point is at that turning point in history. I'm sure as you think about these things, other ideas uh, might come to you about the number nine. In the meantime, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. Bye, Ben Mikdalim. Bye, Ben Mikdalim.